Monday. Y'all can hear me? Y'all hear me good? Hi, George. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Steven. Madison, thank you. Hi, y'all. What's up? What's up? Thank you so much. Is it Sahid? Sahid, I, I think thank you so much. Hi, what's good? Good morning. Well, first off, to everyone who's joined, thank you. Um, thank you all so much for supporting our little movie. Um, over a hundred million is crazy. That's a lot, ain't it? It's a lot of that's a lot of coin. So, thank y'all for um going out to see it. First off, um, means a lot. So. Thank y'all for that. Um, and thank you for the love that y'all are still sending in about it. We really appreciate it. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. So thank you. Um, see all these kind messages. My phone is on less than 50%, so I don't know how long I'm going to be up here, but hi. Um, let me answer some stuff. Will there be a blooper reel? I believe there already is one. I don't know if they've released it yet. But, um, I believe it is already a blooper reel out there somewhere. So, hopefully the people get it because we saw it. I know I saw it. And you know I'm not going to lie to y'all. So, it's out there somewhere in the world. So, I hope y'all get a chance to see it. But, um, no, really, thank y'all so much for supporting the movie. Three weeks at number one. Over $100 million is very crazy. Um, and especially seeing as though we were supposed to be just on Disney, not Disney Plus, ooh, sorry, Disney, Paramount Plus. Um, so the fact that we made it into theaters and y'all supported it is everything. So thank you for that. Just saw Mean Girls for the fourth time. Oof, you got money. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know when it will be available to stream, so sorry. I can't really answer that. Um, what was your favorite memory from filming the movie? My favorite memory was probably everything that happened in between takes, all the inside jokes in between takes. Um, and also like my little random dance battles with actual dancers that we had. Cause you can't tell me I can't dance. You know, I'm gonna hit my little, you know, I'm not gonna give y'all too much cause it's Sunday. So I'm not gonna do that, but uh you know, when the music starts, we bust a little move if we got to. But no, I seriously just want to come on here and say thank you. Because I'm, I'm still overwhelmed by all the love y'all have given us. And um, I miss you, Chris. I hope tour is treating you well. I believe you're still on tour, right? I hope tour is... Um, y'all go follow Kristen. If you haven't already seen her, she is your Gretchen Wieners on the Mean Girls tour. And she's eating it up. So uh, go see her. Hi, Michaela. We saw your moves in the strange loop. I, 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 I danced a little bit in the strange loop. I gave a little song. Um, but yeah, if you got questions, put them in the chat. I'm going to try to get to them. I ain't going to be up here too long because I got some sides to read. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I have some things to answer it. I have some things coming up. I just, I am not allowed to talk about them just yet. Um... So when I get a chance, I'll be able to share. Um, if you picked one other person to play a Mean Girls, who would it be? Uh, in a perfect world, it would probably be Karen. So I could do sexy in a dance break. That's probably what it would be. So, But Ivanska ate that up, as we all know. As we all know. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me answer this real quick. Dream role. Don't laugh at me because this is this is true. And from the bottom of my heart, let me tell y'all something. If in a perfect world, I love Matilda the Musical. Okay, I'm going to just say it. Matilda the Musical eats like crazy. And it is something about that track where I'm like, damn. If she was a 20-something-year-old black man, oh, gosh. The way I just come up in there, just guns a-blazing for that track. That's just a... 
That's a crazy track. Don't judge me. If you haven't seen Matilda, go see Matilda. I'm telling you, we didn't really appreciate it for what it was. I don't think we really appreciated it because score, crazy. Book, crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. But uh, yeah, Matilda and um, I would love to play Nicely Nicely Johnson. I would love to sing Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat um, my way. I would love to to play that track. Yeah. Personally. Um Are you a fan 49ers or Kansas City Chiefs? You lost me at sports. Um sports um I love y'all, but if you give me a sports question, I'm just going to say sports and I'm going to shake my head and I'm probably going to leave it there because I do theater for a reason. I love you, George. George was ahead of our makeup, y'all. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Let's see. Hold on, y'all. I'm getting to these questions. I'm getting to these questions. Who did you hang out with the most on set? Our dancers. The dancers had such beautiful energy and they were so fun. Um, I loved our dancers. Um, Conrad or Jer Jeremiah? Okay. I have a feeling that this has something to do with my coworker, Chris. I love Chris Briney. I love Chris Briney, one of the sweetest, most humble people you will ever meet. I have never seen The Summer I Turn Pretty. Actually, fun fact, I have not seen Moana. I have not seen The Summer I have Turned Pretty. I saw uh, a film that Anne Gallery was in when I was on the plane to Los Angeles for press. Um, I I haven't seen the film that Av Avantika did with Disney. Um... I, I honestly, I don't, I don't know, but I love the people that play those characters. So I'm sure I would love those characters just as much. Um, how have you not seen Moana? Um, I don't, I don't know. Life gets kind of busy, you know? Yeah, no, I've never seen Moana. No. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sure I'm going to watch it at some point soon, especially now that I've worked with Moana. But um, mm -mm. I'm still in my feelings about Princess and the Frog. <laughs> we asked for a black princess and y'all gave us a frog for 95% of the movie and a black woman for 5%. So I'm still in my feelings about that. But I'm going to watch Moana soon, I promise. I don't need y'all judging me. I don't need y'all judging me. The same way y'all was trying to judge us about not knowing who Kylie Minogue was. I'm sorry, y'all. We 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 all we're all cut from different cloths. I don't I don't know all these people. Mm -hmm. Hi, Brittany. I'm doing good. How are you, mm -hmm. boo? My 11 year old daughter and I have seen Mean Girls over 10 times already. So amazing. We love you. Thank you so much, Miss Kim. Thank you, Miss Kim. I appreciate that. And please tell your daughter I said thank you as well. I really appreciate that. Uh, huh. How did you come up with the leave it all to me part? I didn't come up with it. I think it was in the script and they were trying to figure out what song it was going to be. And I think it was between that's was it. I think I, I heard it was between the That's a Raven theme song and Leave It All To Me For My Carly. But I feel like the That's a Raven theme song in French didn't really lend itself to like the joke. I think that's how that went. I could be wrong, but um, yeah, yeah. I think, but don't quote me. Let me answer this. For my baby, Steven, how would you describe your 2024 so far? I miss you and sending you love. I miss you. Uh, 
I think 2024, I don't, honestly, I don't know because so many things have already happened this year that like, you ever have like something like a dream come true that you didn't even know you had or like something happened that you didn't even pray for or like meditate on. That's been 2024 so far. It's been like huge blessings that were never on my um, manifestation board. It's been, it's been a lot of things. Like, of course, Everything is like still challenging because of the world we live in. But um, 2024, I'm just like open to whatever is coming my way and to like exploring those things. And I'm choosing to not walk into fear this year. Um, there was like a lot of anxiety for me while filming Mean Girls because I just did not know. I, I wasn't trained in acting for the camera. I was trained in acting for the stage. So I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm surrounded by these people who have done this all of their lives or are have done it for the majority of their lives. So like for me coming into it, I'm like, oh, girl, what are we doing? That camera kind of close. Things like that. So like this year, we're just going to let anxiety be a figment of our imagination and just walk into positivity and love and all those things. And we're going to have a fun ass time this year. That's what we gonna do. Cause I feel like sometimes I'll get so in my head about the work that I forget to have fun and I'm gonna have fun this year. Hi Janelle, I love you. I love you so much. Um, so yeah, that's what we doing. King, what future roles you got booked? Because I gotta support you in every role now. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that support. Thank you, boo. Uh, I can't say, I can't say, you know, people get in trouble when they spill tea too soon. So I can't say anything, but, um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. That's all I can say. When I am, y'all, I promise when I'm able to say more, I will say more. Um, also to my Broadway folk in here, you probably saw it on my story. Does anybody know if Hinton Battle... Uh, has been scheduled, his uh, tribute, you know, Lights Dimming on Broadway has been scheduled, or if it's already happened. I didn't know if maybe I missed it. Um, but if if it's a thing, can y'all let me know? Because if not, we got an issue, and we're going to have to talk about it. Um, what's your battery percent at? Shh, 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 don't at me, don't at me. Uh-uh. It ain't, it's, look, it's a little below 50, but you know, I, if my phone gets close to dying, I'm going to sign off and go about my business. I ain't gonna let it die on our conversation. Y'all know that. I love y'all so much, but here's the thing. I don't add people to my life that I don't know. With so much love and grace, I just can't. I, 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 barely, I barely know how to work this thing my damn self. So I love you, but I'm probably not gonna add you if I don't know you, all right? But yeah, I don't know if it's any, I know I got some friends that work at Playbill, Broadway World, and all those things. If you know of uh, the the dimming the lights for Hint and Battle, please let me know just so I can have that in my calendar or I can attend or something like that. Um, but if it is not scheduled, also please let us know because that's an issue if it's not. Because he's a three-time Tony winner, so we're going to have to have conversation about it if it's not already being scheduled. Because that's that's really uh, an issue. Um, not a question, but you seem like such a cool person to be friends with. Thank you. Thank you. That's really nice. Thank you so much. I hope I hope my friends would agree. We'd be having fun. So I hope I hope they would agree. Um, are you going to make another movie? That's what I'll say on that. Thoughts on the album Snow Angel. Fun fact. I went to Renee's concert knowing, I think, two songs. And, uh, yeah, it's a good album. And the great, the, what's even better about the Snow Angel album, what you hear on that album, you will hear if you go to see that girl live. And I don't think we, we see that enough. Y'all saw the Grammys, right? We never talked about that. And honestly, I don't think we need to we need to break into that. That's another story. But I think it is so nice to have an artist 
who sounds just as good live as they do on the record. Renee's mic is always on. I am not saying that because I worked with her. I am not saying that to kiss ass. I am saying it because I love artists who actually do what they say they can do. And I love a singer who can actually sing with their mic on and the mic on without pitch correction. Because unfortunately, a lot of your faves, the mic is on, but the engineer is back there switching keys and trying to correct their pitch from the booth. And um, I don't know, maybe we need more like MT girlies to become pop queens. I don't know, maybe that's the thing. But I love someone, I love someone who actually possesses the talent that record labels push to us. Oh, let me answer this real quick. Somebody asked, what's my favorite song from Matilda the Musical? Quiet. Quiet. If you know Matilda, then you know what the hell I'm talking about. Oh, it's Sunday. Sorry. Sorry, God. Um, if you know Matilda, you know what Quiet is. I would sing Quiet. I would actually like to sing that somewhere. So why am I... A finger going crazy. Um, quiet. And to use my other hand. Wow. Uh, but yeah, quiet. Y'all, I'm trying not to cuss. It's Sunday. I'm trying my best not to cuss. In my household, Sunday is... Sunday's different. So I try to behave. You know. Remember when we shot I'd Rather Be Me like 18 times in one day? <laughs> you remember when it started snowing? When it was a whole blizzard outside while we were trying to shoot I'd Rather Be Me and they still had us running down that hill in the blizzard. <sighs> you, you just had to be there. You, you, you had to be there. What's your favorite old school musical? Ain't Misbehaving. Um, Ain't Misbehaving. Mm. Uh, and the tap dance kid. Nobody knows it, but speaking of hints in battle. Um, yeah. Is there a director you've always wanted to work with on stage or on film? Because on stage, it would probably be... Hmm. Probably Kenny Leon. Yeah. Are you a Sabrina Carpenter stand? Wait, I think I know who that... Okay, so... <laughs> I I was randomly like I was really drunk one night and I was on YouTube and it was this it was this young lady and she was doing a concert and she like changed the ending to her song one of her songs for like whatever city she was in and I think it's her correct me if I'm wrong whoever asked that question correct me if I'm wrong but um da 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 Da, 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 it's like something like that in the melody. I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Am I right? That was in my key because I don't know it this morning. Uh oh, there go Hameen. Hey, Hameen. Hameen is the best barber on Broadway, y'all. He cut us for a strange loop and he kept us sharp. Hi, Hameen. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Yeah, that is Sabrina. Okay, so, okay, here's T. I know of her because of that more than I know about her for playing Katie and Mean Girls because also I think she had, like, what, three performances before COVID hit? Her, her and Renee? So, I don't know. Hey, Amari. Hey, boo. So, I don't, I don't that's all I know about her. But um, I love her voice. She sounds great and um, seems like a vibe I just really haven't listened to. I'm going to be honest with y'all. It's a lot of stands in here. I know we got, I see some Taylor Swift stands, some Sabrina Carpenter stands, all the, the all, all these people are talented. You hear me? I listen to old school music. Damien is 17. Jaquel Spivey is 25. So my music taste, I think, is a little different than some of y'all. I'm not really listening to like, with all due respect, those who like got their start on Disney Channel circa like 2017, 2018. Like I, that's just artists that I, I have not really listened to. Not to say they're not good, um, but I just, I don't really listen to them. I'm, I'm older than y'all. Some of y'all, I think y'all kind of, look at this y'all. This is, he ain't 17. You saw it in the movie. The makeup tried their best, but I'm a grown ass man. Um, 
thoughts on working with Chris? I think I already said it. And if I didn't, Chris Briney, he's not messy. He's not toxic. He's not rude. He's not disrespectful. He comes on set. He does his job. Nothing but kindness. Nothing but kindness. Yes, I'm still Gen Z, but I think I, I think some of y'all think I'm I'm younger than I am, and um, I I don't. There are artists I just don't listen to. They're not my they're not my taste. Um, what keeps you grounded, Jaquel? Uh, not being an industry plant. I think not being an industry plant keeps me grounded. Not having super rich parents that have paid the way for me to get to where I am has kept me grounded. Um, and I think actually having to like live a normal life before all of this keeps me grounded. I think there are a lot of people who are in this industry, but little do y'all know they have been trained to get to this point for years. Um, and that's great for them. Honestly, if I could have chosen the industry plant route, shit. Oh, it's Sunday. I keep cussing. I'm sorry, Lord. But you get what I'm saying? Like, I I lived in a normal neighborhood in Raleigh, North Carolina, single mama. I auditioned for my conservatory program in college. I auditioned for a strange loop. Tina Fey saw me in a strange loop. So there, that's where Mean Girls came into play. But I think there are a lot of people who like, you get it kind of easier because of the access you have. And that's not me. So I know what it's like to not be able to afford a Broadway ticket. I know what it's like to not be able to afford to go to the movies to see these things. I think that keeps me grounded, knowing where I came from. Um, and knowing that like this is all a gift and a blessing. And I don't take it lightly. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it would be different if, like, I had rich parents who just shit me off to a studio and said, make my child a star. I loved your Damien interpretation. I thought it was very genuine and followed you immediately after. Them. Thank you. I really, I appreciate that, y'all. I really appreciate that because... I didn't want him to come across as like people's idea of how gay gay people act. You know what I mean? Like it's always, yes, go on, honey. Boots the house down. Like it's like, okay, 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 girl. It ain't always that. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not always that. Sometimes we just be gay. And we still be just normal people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes we can we can give fierceness and all that, but it doesn't have to be like, ah, you know, like for me anyway. I'm like, I think he could be a little chill. I don't know. I think he could be chill. I think he could be. Yeah. So thank you for saying that. That was really nice. Um Okay, yeah. Um, uh, tips for auditions. Hi, Shelly. Um, be overly prepared. That's my tip for an audition. If you feel that there is a flaw in your audition material, there is one. So you might want to go back and try again uh, and make sure that there's nothing they could say to call you out. You know the song front to back. You know the entire song. You know what key it's in. You know, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, some people just don't go that deep. But I'm the type, if I go to an audition, baby, if you, if you find a flaw, you must have really been looking. Because I make sure that shit. I'm going to stop talking. Because the cuss words keep slipping out. And it's Sunday. And I'm trying not to curse, y'all. Trying not to curse. Uh, what was your process like for creating the role where the, the character of Usher? Uh, my process was all in the text. So everything that was in the text. It was everything that I kind of had to like build him up by. Um, hi, Dwayne. Hey, boo. I also, every character I play, I make a music playlist for them. The music they listen to. The artists they like. Because I love music. And you can tell a lot about me by my playlist. And I feel like that's how it is for everybody. So every character I get, excuse me, I change the playlist. I make one. Um, 
And also the role was pretty much like crafted after Michael R. Jackson. So the fact that I got to see him every day, I'm just looking at him like, oh, you know what I mean? Like I could go in more into detail if you DM me, if you really want to know, because I know a lot of people are auditioning for that role. Um, but yeah, if I get a character, I make a I make a whole playlist. And then I will also make a playlist of TV shows to watch that they would like. What what type of TV would they probably like? Because the things we take in are things that like I think affect us. So yeah. That's that. Hi everybody who's joining and by everybody that's leaving. Thank you for stopping by. I said it paused me through the poor connection. Um, yeah. How do you completely inverse yourself in a character? Have you ever had to completely switch up your personality for a role? Yes. If you have seen A Strange Loop, uh, then you know that I was playing someone that is very much not Jaquel. But that's the fun of it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the fun of being an actor. I like to try to get as far away as I can from, like, myself, especially if it's a darker role. Um, just makes it easier. What songs did you have for Damien on the playlist? I had... Oof. I think I had... Beyonce was on there. I, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't take her off. Beyonce was on there. Um, I had... I put on... Um, SZA... Because I'm, I'm not really the biggest SZA listener, but I put him Doja Cat. Um, <laughs> this is going to be random, but there was some like Fifth Harmony songs on there. Um, Clarity by Zed was the song that I had. It's like Damien's pop up music. I don't know if you um If our love is clarity, why are you my remedy? That one, that one was like his pump up song. So I would play that every day before going to set and it would hype me up um that was like yeah yeah where do you belong is the best song on the mean girl soundtrack i don't know what soundtrack you've been listening to because it's not on ours but i enjoy it as well oh so sad it was cut yes okay there we go um beyonce's new song okay so for the new songs by beyonce um, what TV series you think Damien would love to watch? What did I have? Uh, what did I have for him? I think there was some Pretty Little Liars in there. And I think, I think I had him watching a lot of, uh, Real Housewives of, I think, Beverly Hills. I'm Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I was like, his Housewives has to be different. Though I feel like they would be Atlanta. Um, yeah. And I think like Gossip Girl. Like all those shows. That's what Damien watched. I threw in some That's So Raven. I threw in some um, iCarly. Because there had to be a reason that he wanted to sing that theme song. Um, and yeah. It was a real... Yeah, I, I'm weird when it comes to creating characters, y'all. I don't know. I don't. I don't really go by the book sometimes. I just like not wing it, but you know, you know what I mean. So that's how that works. I'm telling y'all. At some point, I'm a. I'm a sing stop. Hi, Nico. I love you, boo. At some point, I'm a sing stop. Or where do you belong? At some point. At some point, I'm a sing it for y'all. The people have wanted it. So at some point, I'm going to give it to y'all. Um, wait, Chocolate, what do you think about Beyonce's country album? I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So Renaissance Act 1. Now, if you are a Beyonce uh, fan, follower, what, whatever have you, you know she didn't give vocals like she could have in Act 1 of Renaissance. Let's talk about that. I was like, huh, there has to be more vocals coming in Act 2. And also, I felt like it was a lot more up-tempos than it was ballads. And we also know Beyonce loves herself a ballad. 
And act two, I was like, I have a feeling it's going to be country music and it's going to be ballads. And then she dropped 16 carriages and I was like, oh, that's where we're going. I'm ready. You hear me? I'm, I I love Beyonce. I love the party music. And like, it's fun to listen to, especially when you're like drunk or high or something. But I also love the Beyonce where it's like the vocal is the star of the song. And I feel like with act one of Renaissance, the production was the star more than the vocal. And that's never been Beyonce. So I'm excited because I think act two is really going to give it. And y'all, I hate to say it, but I feel like mama's about to retire a little bit. Uh, don't get mad at me. Don't get mad. I think I think Auntie has been doing this a long time, and deserves to rest and be a mother and chill. And um, I I think if she goes on tour for Act Two, I think that is a clear confirmation that Beyonce is about to she's about to retire. I'm sorry, y'all. Don't be mad at me. But also, let's be honest. I think she's given us enough. I am not going to have this black woman running her body and her spirit into the ground for us until she's 80. I think she deserves to rest. We have nothing but excellent work from her. Great albums. I don't consider any of them to be a flop. We have visuals for days. We have music videos for days. Every tour she's done, she's released it on DVD. How do I know? Because I own them. So, like... I think she's given us enough, y'all. Especially black women in this industry. Let's not act like they don't have to work a million times harder. I'm sure she's exhausted. And I think she deserves to sit down, stuff her face with whatever food she wants, and to chill with her kids. I think she deserves it. I think she's given us enough. I don't think I don't think she needs to give us any anything more than what she's already done. And if she comes back, it should be on her terms, not because we want visuals and not, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's how I feel. But again, I'm going to ask again in case anybody is in here. If you know of a date when they are dimming the lights on Broadway for Henson Battle, please DM me and let me know. If you don't believe it's happening, okay. But if you know of a date, if you, y'all, Michael Kilgore is in here. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you think you know singing, you do not know singing if you do not know Michael Kilgore. So I'm going to ask you all, when this is over, to go on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Just put in Michael Kilgore. And whatever pops up first, watch it. And just let that say all that it has to say. Now, my personal favorite, Michael, I love you. My first personal favorite is, uh, didn't we almost have it all? I think for like a Broadway Sings Whitney Houston thingy. Yeah, that right there, Michael Kilgore, go look him up. And I need not say more on that. I need not say more on that. If you want to know what a vocal sounds like, you got to look up Michael Kilgore. That's that. I am not paid for that. This is not an ad. This is from a fan of music and a fan of storytelling. Go look him up. Go look him up. And if you have a bootleg of him playing the witch. Okay, we're back. Okay, if you have a bootleg of him playing the witch and into the woods, send it to me, cause I would love to see that. Um, but yeah, yeah, y'all. I think Beyonce deserves to rest. Sorry for that commercial break, but I think Beyonce deserves to rest. We got enough albums. So if she gives us another tour for Act Two, I have a feeling retirement and rest is near for her, and I think it's well deserved. That's how I feel. Yeah. Fave so song, Snow Angel song, probably Pretty Girls. Pretty Girls is probably my favorite. Because honestly, y'all, let's be honest. If we had it our way, Beyonce would be doing this thing until like the age of 85. I don't think she got to do that. Hi, hey, Jacqueline. Well, do you have any tips for playing Damien? I'm going to play him for our high school musical. Baby, please reply. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. I hope you have a very fun time with the role. I will say, for the character of Damien, being gay does not look one way. Being a queer person does not look one way. So however you feel Damien's queerness should be represented, 
if you represent his humanity first, that's all that needs to be said. I don't think you should go into it looking at him or looking at them, however you play it, as a gay character or a queer character. I think you should go into it looking at them as a high school student who happens to be queer. That's all I'm going to say. I hope you have a great time with the role and that you love it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, y'all. Wait, what's this? I'm, what are all these questions? I love y'all, but I'm not singing on this live today. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just not doing it. Did you see the Wicked trailer? Yes, I did. You know what's funny? You know what's funny to me? Uh, seeing posts about people having a problem with Cynthia Arrivo, uh, Arrivo's battle cry of, uh, Elphaba in the end of the trailer. And what's crazy to me is how there is literally a meme, a video of all of these women, majority of them being white, I think maybe about two black women in it, if not one, doing their own version of a battle cry. No one says anything about it. Some sound great, some sound different, but it's their interpretation. And as soon as we get a black woman who plays Elpha full time, since we can't get that on Broadway, since we get it for the movie, now all of a sudden everybody's up in arms about her choice as to what the character that she's playing is going to sound like. And I just find it odd that out of the 30,000 white women that have played Elpha, I've never really heard anybody have beef with their interpretations. But now all of a sudden everybody has an opinion on this black woman's choice. And that's funny to me. That's funny to me. Uh, but I love that she has braids, micro braids. Um, I, I love that um, she looks so powerful in the trailer. Um, I love the costuming and all those things. I'm excited to see it. That's, that's how I feel. I'm excited to see it. So it's just ain't that odd, though, y'all. Haven't we seen about 30,000 white alphabets? And as soon as we get a black woman to like do her own spin on it. I don't know, y'all. This might be... Hmm? You you ain't said this... This movie done been... This, this musical done been around for 30,000 years and y'all have not said anything about these other women who've just... Y'all have not said anything about that. But when we get this interpretation... Come on, y'all. The amount of growls and screaming and and all the things we've heard and now we got an issue. Come on, y'all. Shh. Just let the movie play. Just let the movie play. It's it's just it's a lot. Come on. Aren't we just always criticized for something? Let's be honest, y'all. Whether and, and the thing is, she could have been perfect, and they really would have had an issue. And I'm like, at the end of the day, she's screaming because it's a lot of it's a lot going on. Let let her do her thing. Let her cook. Movie ain't even come out yet. That's my thing. Let me let me get on get let me hop on my soapbox real quick. Also, black gay weddings. I love your profile. I love y'all so much in the work y'all do, and thank you for that. Um, but let me get on my soapbox. Twenty percent. I'ma hurry up. I just think. That my issue when it comes to theater fans at large is that these actors are bearing their souls on these projects. And while you may not enjoy it, it is very difficult for you to have hateful opinions if it is something that you yourself cannot do. Everybody has a right to an opinion, yes. But if you yourself can't sing that in its original key or sing it with clarity in pitch and clarity in tone, you can't be too loud about your judgment on it because you wouldn't post it because you can't post it because you can't sing it. So I just think it's very easy to talk from someone who's watching, but let us see you on that stage and let's see what sound comes out of your throat and then we can judge you on that, right? Because we all have a right to our own, our own opinions, right? That's why I don't have TikTok. That's really why I don't have TikTok. It's too many people that don't know what pitch and key is talking about what good singing should sound like. You don't get to do that to me. I'm sorry. 
Mm-mm. If row, row, row your boat gives your voice a struggle, baby, you can't tell me about Cynthia singing Defying Gravity. I've seen some of y'all struggle with Happy Birthday. Struggle. I'm like, damn, y'all just stop cussing. I, I mean, you know, but it's just easier to talk when we don't know what you sound or look like. That's my opinion, though. And if some of you are up in here doing it, stop it. Stop it. Let people cook. Have an opinion, but cut it out. Okay? Just cut it out. Because I'm sure some of y'all, some of y'all up in here do it too. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We don't do that. You, mm-mm. Mm-mm. You, you, no. You can't tell no damn pilot how to fly a plane when you don't even, no. When you don't know what to do. You can't tell me. You can't. There are too many people that know good singing from listening to it and not from producing it. And that's where your opinion has to have a nice little line there. If you can't produce it, you can't tell me how to produce it. With love. With love. With love. You know, it's nothing but love. You know. What you say, Dwayne? I meant to ask you, what's your most meaningful quote? Uh, I think it's James Baldwin... Uh, the space in which I exist will not, the space in which I belong will not exist until I create it. The space for me will not exist until I create it. Something like that. Um, I think it's that one. That's my favorite quote. Isn't it it? The space in which I exist will not exist until I create it. Something like that. But yeah. And also it's okay to let people have opinions, y'all. It's all right. You can let them have opinions. Right or wrong, they can have it. You just ain't got to listen to it. <laughs> That's my favorite part. You could talk. I just stopped listening already. Um, so I quote, can you say hi, Coda? Hi, Coda. What's your opinion on movie musicals in general? Movie musicals give the access that Broadway thinks it, it's been given for years. You ask somebody about Broadway, oh my goodness, what would this world be without art? What would this world be without Broadway? Do you mean what would New York be without Broadway? Because ain't nobody else seeing it if they're not making it here. And if they do get here, they can't afford it. So I think movie musicals, movie musicals introduced me to Broadway. I will never crap on movie musicals. You, you won't catch it. You won't ever catch it happening. Until Broadway tickets are affordable, until national tours are affordable, until they start streaming these shows so that people can watch them at home and money can be made and people can be inspired. That's how I feel. I think art belongs to everybody. And one of the biggest gatekeepers in the industry of entertainment is Broadway. To do a show like A Strange Loop and to not see any black people in the audience. <laughs> you had to be there. I love movie musicals so much, but sometimes they don't translate to the screen very well, you know? I mean, that could very well be true, but at the same time, I would rather have something that doesn't translate well given to people than not have anything at all. If we wait for Broadway to reach people, it will never happen. It won't. It didn't reach me. Movie musicals reach me. And then I found Broadway. So, no. Mm -mm. That's how I feel. You still got people on Broadway who are like, y'all need to stop with the slime tutorials and the bootlegs. Where do you think your fan base came from? Because the people that go see these shows don't have an Instagram because they're 70 and up. These slime tutorials are why people follow you on Instagram. They're why these kids follow your Twitter and send money to your cameo. That's, that's how that works. So you don't have to like slime tutorials, but they raised me. I wouldn't know nothing about Broadway without them. So notice the thing about it. Most people that make it to Broadway were also able to experience it before they got on there. And I think that's a level of privilege we don't talk about enough. So, hey. But that's just me. But yeah, yeah, y'all. So 
that's what's going on in my world. I just want to come on. Honestly, I came on here to say thank you for the Mean Girl support and getting us over 100 mil because that was crazy. Um, that was really it because my phone about to die. Y'all know me. I usually come on here with 100% battery, but today, uh-uh. It didn't happen. Um, how was working with Ali E? Um... What's a skill that you think really translated from your stage experience to your experience from Mean Girls? Uh, for me, I think belief in things that aren't there is something we have to do on stage. But to actually be in a school, oh, baby, I was in it. I was in high school. I was 17. My beard was gone. I was waiting for my mama to pick me up at carpool. I was, oh, yeah, I was in it. So I think the skill of like attention of disbelief to belief came in clutch. Yeah. If that makes sense. I feel like I worded that wrong. OMG, the beard has gotten longer since I last saw you, babe. See, thank you. I'm trying. Don't hype me up. Don't hype me up. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah. Um, so that's been that's been my world, y'all. That's been my life. Some exciting things coming that I can't wait to share. Um, and if you know, just want to hop on and say what was up, OMG King, I was an extra in Mean Girls, and you were so much fun to watch on set. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for for coming on and and helping us build the world of North Shore High School. Thank you for that. But yeah, y'all, I love y'all. I love y'all lots. I love you so much. To those who are just joining, I'm so sorry. I've been up here for a uh, quicker than usual. Usually, I'm up here longer. Um, but I got to go study some sides for some really cool things. Um, but yeah, I love y'all. Be nice to yourselves and be nice to other people because nobody likes an asshole. Um, and yeah, have a very happy Sunday.